Hi guys, I know that this is probably a pretty long video, haven't edited it yet, but it's pretty safe to say because I talk forever. I pose a really good question at the end of it, so please, please, please watch until the end. As always, there are timestamps in the description as well. Okay, enjoy the video! <laughs> Something I've been thinking about a lot over the last couple of months has just been when I first got into low waste living or like trying to minimize my waste, zero waste living, whatever you want to call it. It was around 2016 slash 2017. At that time, if you heard the word zero waste, pretty much all you thought about was a mason jar full of someone's lively possessions and trash and all of their hopes and dreams and <sighs> things they wanted to accomplish for the world. But I feel like things have changed, which is wonderful. You know, when you hear the word zero waste now, first off, people know what it is, which is amazing. Also, when you think of zero waste living now, you start to think of things like a reusable bamboo cutlery set or beeswax wraps or like a perfectly curated Instagram pantry full of mason jars in their bulk thing. And while I think a lot of us know that being 100% zero waste is like this pretty unattainable lifestyle for most people, depending on where they live. You know, I'm really happy that people know what the term zero waste is. I'm really happy that it's raised a lot of discussion and stores seem to be popping up everywhere, which of course makes it easier and more and more people can jump on to having all of these swaps that maybe aren't perfect, but are a little bit better. And if thousands of people are doing something that's just a little bit better, it really amounts to a lot. And for that, I am wholeheartedly Super, 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 okay, I'm gonna shut up. Super grateful. But, yes, there is a but. With zero waste becoming more of a trend, I also have a few things that maybe bother me, but also I think just warrant a discussion and I kind of want to open the dialogue about today to get everybody else's feedback on as well. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christy. If you are new here, hello. I make videos about loving yourself, loving others, and loving the planet, and I have no idea how that became my slogan, but it somehow did, and it's true. I make videos about living a healthier and happier lifestyle, incorporating vegan wellness and sustainable lifestyle hacks into your life, and if any of that stuff interests you, you know the deal, make sure to hit subscribe. You might have guessed by the title, this is another video in my zero waste swaps that need to stop. And I don't know why I'm talking like this. I'm gonna stop now. I feel like the last video was received so well that I'm definitely gonna make this a series. So definitely incorporate anything that bothers you in the comment section and I'll be sure to include it in the next video. Kind of in like a controversial anti-haul, greenwashing, things that we should maybe not completely avoid, but also reconsider and also just ask brands to be honest about and change. I feel like if I'm kicking off this series, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about some low waste staples, because honestly, they're getting to me. If I'm targeted with another ad for a reusable bamboo cutlery set, I don't know what I will do, but it won't be positive. I just am so over some of these swaps for a vast majority of reasons. And as always, before I jump into these swaps, don't forget that I'm not talking to any one person or any one brand specifically. I'm more so just trying to get the conversation going. If you've made any of these swaps or if you've purchased any of these things, I'm not calling you out. Honestly, many of them I have purchased and done myself. Part of it is just mistakes that I made and maybe you can avoid them in the future too. I mean, let's be real, I'm calling myself out if I'm being honest. I've pretty much made every single one of the mistakes that we're about to talk about, so. I think what's so amazing about the low waste movement or about any kind of like activism movement like this is that the entire sustainability movement is not on your shoulders. So if you feel like you might have messed up because you feel like you've been duped by a product or a brand, that's okay. One product and one purchase is not going to ruin the world and you have to take that pressure off of yourself because one person's changes aren't going to affect the grand scheme of things. But our purchases do make a difference. One of my favorite phrases of all time is we don't need a handful of people doing zero waste perfectly. We need millions of people doing it imperfectly and that is so accurate. We're all in this journey together. We're all doing this together and like don't put that on your shoulders. It's also up to companies to be honest to us, which is very important. First one I want to mention. Okay, before we go any further, I'm gonna foreshadow this with uh, you're gonna see my sweaty mustache throughout this whole video because I'm human. 
and it happened also there was a button on my dress undone so we're just gonna move on we're gonna pretend like that never happened just thought i would point that out for what reason i'm not sure and hopefully i haven't wasted your time but i think i have okay i'm gonna go enjoy the video and i don't actually own so i don't have any here with me but i keep seeing these bamboo cutlery sets that like are sold in these like rollable things. I actually used to sell bamboo products and I can tell you right now that if you're buying them from any random place that doesn't show you like exactly where they're getting them from, I'm sure there are some amazing companies out there that I don't know about. I'm I'm gonna say that. I can guarantee you that they're all coming from the same factory overseas and they've all been harvested very unsustainably and made very inexpensively, which means that they're not good quality. And also that bamboo is not gonna last you very long because bamboo is gonna start rotting because you're putting it in your food. My other thing with reusable cutlery sets, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, you don't need to buy one. You literally have cutlery in your drawer at home. Before going out and buying like, you know, your portable reusable set, just use what you have and maybe one day like it'll be important enough to you like you'll realize that you eat out often and you actually need one. Like for me personally, I work from home all the time and I don't eat out that often and if I do, I, I just bring a lunch container and a fork from my kitchen cabinet <laughs> because I had bought like a really expensive, really nice durable reusable set and then I lost it and I just realized after losing it I never needed it and that was $35 that I could have saved because I bought it from Whole Foods. This is a reusable water bottle, one that I've owned for a few years and guess what it's one of many that I own and yet I still look at water bottles all the time and I go wow that's really really beautiful and I'd really like to buy that. Then I come home and I realize I have like six of them. Uh, you know what, this ties into my next one that I wanna bring up. So let's talk about both of them together. Reusable water bottles and reusable tote bags. Reusable tote bags and water bottles were like the first eco swaps that came out. And it's probably what is the thing that I think furthest back and it kind of like made me feel empowered and like I was doing something. I remember it being like 2004, which means I would have been in like the third or fourth grade. I remember an inconvenient truth coming out. And I remember around that time, my parents saying that they were no longer gonna buy plastic water bottles and they were gonna start using reusable grocery totes. I just remember using a reusable water bottle at that time and feeling like so empowered by it. But that was more than 10 years ago. There are so many reusable water bottle companies out there that are are still popping up every day. And one, most of them don't reveal to us how they're made, which again, is just always this question that I want people to ask. And, and I'm not gonna lie, like, I don't even know. There are so many companies where I'm like, how was that made? Who made it? I don't have all the answers, but it's really aesthetically pleasing and I'd really just like to buy it. <laughs> Anyways, my point is here that these two swaps have been existing for so, so, so long. And I can pretty much guarantee that in the time span between now and at least 2004, I feel like these started to pop up in like the late 90s more so. I mean, reusable bags have been a thing forever if you live in Europe, at least according to my grandmother. <laughs> You probably don't need to buy one because I'm sure that you've been at an event somewhere and they've given you a reusable water bottle. I'm sure your local thrift store has a bunch of them. And yet people are still buying reusable water bottles. Is that just me or do we not already own like 15 of them? Just a thought, just something to think about. Not to mention now that I live in a house with four other people, can I interest you in some water bottles? Because we have a lot of them. <laughs> and would you look at that? Most of them are very old. Those two are from college. That was a freebie. That was also a freebie. Also a freebie. Do you see my point now? Do you see the problem? <laughs> and how many of them get thrown out in the trash every year just for somebody to buy another one? These are questions that I have. I don't know the answer to that question, but it's, it's a question that I have. Yeah. I think my point here is that aesthetics aren't everything. Sometimes like think about the function of it. And I don't know how many times I've seen a really beautiful water bottle and I've been like, but I really want to start the habit of drinking more water. What if I buy it? It's going to make me drink more water. I'm still a dehydrated bitch. I'm still constantly dehydrated. It never made a difference. <laughs> actually, no, that's not true. Some of them have and some of them, when you find a water bottle that you really actually like, I think you're more prone to actually want to carry it and use it. I don't know. Again, just something to think about. 
just something to think about. And I feel like the same thing goes for reusable totes. Like we all have them and yet you're standing in the checkout line at Trader Joe's and you go, that's a really cute bag. You know, I could really use another tote bag. No, Cheryl, you don't need another tote bag. You have one. Is that just me or the next one I want to mention is kind of within the realm of zero waste, but more so sustainable fashion. I swear to goodness, if I see another sustainable basics company pop up, I'm gonna be so mad. <laughs> Within sustainable fashion, like obviously we need to be making more sustainable alternatives than their fast fashion counterparts. Like that's very, very prevalent and aware and I'm a huge supporter of that. But we also have so much clothing on the planet already. And if you're spending all of this money to launch a sustainable fashion capsule collection, which we don't need entire capsule collections, like create a winning product don't go out and create something that's already been done just so that you can sell it and market it as a sustainable brand. And I feel like that is what really grinds my gears about all of the products that I'm gonna mention in this video is just that so much of it is just so that we can sell a product, which I do wanna talk about. Like there is steps in getting the consumer and like moving the economy towards that. I definitely wanna talk about that towards the end of the video. And that's where I kinda of wanna open up the, let's open up the comment section and get a conversation going about how we can change the world and create a positive impact as one as a community together because we're wonderful human beings and we're doing wonderful things. Yeah. But for real, I just feel like there is so much textile waste on this planet already. We need to stop making more and we need to figure out how to move the fashion industry towards making stuff out of things that already exist, whether that's selling secondhand clothing or making clothes out of old clothes. You know, not every piece of material, not every secondhand item is salvageable or can't have a line of a hundred matching things. Like these are all very real issues. But all I'm saying is we have so much stuff sitting in thrift stores and sitting in landfills right now. Do we need another basic white t-shirt that I can get at the thrift store for $2? Like if you're putting all this effort into making a sustainable fashion brand, make something that is unique. Like my theory with shopping now is I try to thrift as much as I possibly can and I'm trying to support, you know, a lot of people who are making businesses out of selling things with upcycled materials or selling secondhand items. Whether that's a small business or a big business, I'm all for it. But I'm not also anti-supporting a sustainable fashion brand. I think there are so many of them that have amazing initiatives and are doing amazing things like outside of even just like the clothes that they're selling. They have all these amazing work that they do and I'm so proud of them all. But the way that I look at it is if there is a piece that is like really unique and just beautifully crafted and somebody put all of their creative energy into making a beautiful, unique textile in a sustainable way, then that is when I'm gonna buy brand new. Everything else, like a plain white t-shirt, I can thrift that. Now when I'm talking about basics, I don't think I'm on board for thrifting my underwear yet, so I'm not talking about underwear, but I just more so mean like, a plain tank top, a plain t-shirt. There are so many t-shirts and tank tops in thrift stores. We have way more of them than we know what to do with. I don't know if I'm like 100, 100, 100% against sustainable basics. I don't think I explained this fully to the best of my abilities in this video, but I mean kind of partially like I have a hard time justifying spending $80 for like a really bad, the exact same mold as every really bad like hoodie, t-shirt, t-shirt dress or whatever. And then in part, I also mean this just for the sake of of like I feel like I see all these companies pop up and it's like okay are you releasing a sustainable line of basics just so that you can start a sustainable fashion company and play into that greenwashing because you saw this gap in the market or are you actually passionate about clothing which obviously that's a rant in and of itself and that is rampant in the fashion industry to begin with but I just I don't know it grinds my gears okay back to me explaining that <laughs> I'm just saying I wish I saw more originality and more creative energy being put into these things. Basics are great because you're gonna wear them forever. And I think that that's really, you know, what people are thinking and they're gonna be classic pieces forever. They're not gonna be a fad that's gonna go out of style. So there is that. If I'm gonna play devil's advocate on my own theory here. Did I just counteract the whole thing? <laughs> This is a loud one. My next one is aesthetic 
bunch of containers. Instagram's favorite thing to talk about other than mason jars because mason jars, for whatever reason, get all of the press. I understand why they're incredibly useful and aesthetically pleasing. I just, maybe this is a personal thing because I have major regrets for spending money on this cheaply made item, but I kept seeing them all over Pinterest whenever I would search zero waste. I'd get a picture of this. This is a tiffin, which is a really popular uh, style of to-go food container in primarily Indian cultures, I believe. And they're incredibly useful. They stack. Um, this one's only two tiers, but you can get more tiers than this. And the top of it is smaller, so you can put all of your liquids in here, and then you can put your dry ingredients in here and then mix them together whenever you get to your final destination so that it's not all soggy and gross. Incredibly useful, incredible container, but I bought it because I saw it on Instagram. I didn't actually need it. I like told myself that I needed it, but I just didn't. I didn't. Anytime I'm grabbing to-go food, I really just could have used one of the containers that I already had in the plethora of Tupperware that for whatever reason just seemed to accumulate. It's more like Tupperware's the lid, am I right? <laughs> but for real, I could have used anything and I seriously purchased this just because it was aesthetically pleasing. I also should say I'm not just talking about Tiffin specifically, I just mean like aesthetically looking to-go containers, any purchase that is brought on by like the simple aesthetics of something when it's supposed to be like a tool, a function. While I think that you should love and appreciate the look of everything in your life, you should just be asking yourself, do I actually need it? However, so must say that with a Tiffin, is there a level of cultural appropriation there? That's a question. That's a question. I'm asking. Also, I'm starting to sweat. It's getting really warm in this room. Okay, and my last one here is the good old mason jar. I just want to talk about it for one second. <laughs> Kick my water bottle over, why don't you? The Instagram aesthetic of everything being in perfect mason jars, I think has devalued the awareness that people have that they can just reuse jars and things that they already own. Rather than going out and buying a matching set of mason jars, might be your need, might be something that you need. We can reuse the jars that we already have and I just feel like the Instagram aesthetic has made low waste living so unattainable and you can make your jars look cute, like do some doodles or paint the lid or actually tag me in some upcycling ideas for jars because I'm always looking forward to reincorporate as well because I'm not perfect and I do buy things in glass jars still when I probably don't need to. Like, I make these videos, but like I'm certainly not perfect. I'm like very far from perfect as well. Anyways, I think my point here is that we need to start Instagramming the very attainable, very realistic. You know, I took a picture with my compost bin the other day. There was lots of dirt and gross things. I think that a lot of people have been making an effort to share that. And honestly, I, I'm calling myself out. I should share more about the less aesthetically pleasing stuff as well. But it definitely has this vibe of needing to be a perfect imagery. For so many of these swaps, like that's kind of what I wanna bring up is like, consider your needs before you buy. I think all of these things are obviously amazing things. You know, I would rather people be using a reusable water bottle that they bought brand new than using plastic water bottles for the rest of their lives because not only is that a really empowering swap, you know, I bought a brand new coffee tumbler and I still talk about it all the time. I love my Hydro Flask. I bought it a couple years ago and I use it every day and it's what got me off of, you know, I used to have a bunch of coffee mugs that I just thought were really ugly and I didn't want to hold and bring around with me. And so I would go back to buying the disposable ones because there was just something that felt really nice about holding that Starbucks disposable cup or whatever coffee company. And like for whatever reason, is it just me or do disposable coffee cups have the best PR team? Like why is there such like a cozy, nostalgic? When I was a kid, I like dreamt of getting older so that I could walk around with my coffee cup. Why did I aspire to that? I don't know, but I did. But I bought a brand new one and that is what got me to want to use my reusable cup and bring it around with me and not use a disposable. So everybody's needs and preferences are different. And you know, again, like I said at the beginning of the video, you know, it's not about one individual purchase. It's about our purchases as a whole and just asking ourselves, do we need it? Because I think that even within eco swaps, there's just a lot of mindless consumerism. Like I was saying earlier, I wanna open the dialogue about, you know, we need to shift the economy to a more circular one and to have a more sustainable future 
we have to have so many different things that need to change and need to adapt to a new system, you know? Sustainability is about so much more than just the planet and, you know, your carbon footprint and stuff like that. To have true sustainability, you need to have fair wages and like human rights is so important. Animal rights and changing the economy and changing our healthcare systems and all of that needs to change because having a true sustainable future is about a happy planet, a happy human population, a healthy human population, Population, happy animals, happy ecosystem, like we're all connected. All of these things are to say like, you know, maybe encouraging more consumerism is kind of against what sustainability is at its core. But if you're familiar with consumer behavior, you kind of know that there has to be an element of familiarity there for consumers. So if buying this instead of that, is you know one of those steps along the way then maybe that helps consumers get more familiar with it but what if our economy was based off of selling secondhand items or items that were made from other items or based on spending your money on experiences like something that i think about all the time is what if we went to the mall if people still went to malls <laughs> and instead of going there to buy things like instead of going there to buy you know the cutest outfit that i'm going to wear to the party next week so that i can impress all of these people that i don't actually care about impressing because i really just want to feel me in whatever i'm wearing which probably isn't the trend that a fast fashion company is telling me is the trend this week it's probably something a little bit more personal than that imagine if i was going to a mall and instead of buying that i was spending my money on experiences and i was spending my money on life and growing as a human being and learning things but we don't want to spend our money on things like that now because what consumers place importance on i mean every individual is different and you know what's important to you is going to be very different from what's important to me but on average especially in north america live in such a consumer centric world i guess my question for you guys is you know we want this vision of a circular economy and what are your thoughts on all these zero waste stores that are popping up that are getting things inexpensively made and yet they're marketed as plastic free in a sustainable swap when in reality you have no idea where it came from that's something that i see all the time within this movement as well and could be the topic of its own video but at the same time you know all of these amazon products and all of those zero waste stores they're getting the conversation going and they're making it attainable and affordable for so many people to lower their impact of course with anything in life there are pluses and minuses but i'm just curious like what is what are your thoughts and how do you think that we should be moving within shifting the economy to a more sustainable one. I'm very, very curious to hear. All right, without further ado, I have been filming for what feels like forever. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget I have a bunch of important links in the description box. Also, if you're ever curious to see behind the scenes vlogs, if you wanna see what I get up to in my day to day, I no longer vlog on this channel and all of my vlogs are over on Patreon, as well as you can support this channel over there and watch all of my videos without the sponsored segments and you can watch them early before they go up on YouTube as always. So that link, as well as my Instagram, my new TikTok, my email newsletter that goes out every single Sunday with tips and tricks and interesting things that I found around the internet regarding zero waste or veganism or documentaries or podcasts. I always put music playlists in there. That goes out my email newsletter, which is in the description box. It's one of my favorite little things to sit down and create. It's kind of like a self-care practice at this point. It's obviously really nice to be able to share that with you guys as well. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're having a scrumptious day. I hope you're enjoying enjoying your sequestered time. I'm starting to hate the word sequester at this point and I'm babbling now, so I'm gonna go. <laughs> I love you guys. Remember to stay happy, humble, and forever compassionate. And don't forget that we're all on this journey together and we're all learning and growing and I'm learning and growing. I have made every single one of these mistakes. I'm in the firm belief of nothing is like a terrible mistake because you're gonna learn something and there's no point in regretting anything. So we're all on this journey together, making swaps, helping mama earth. And again, I'm blabbing, so I'm gonna go. Okay, remember to stay happy. There are things on the floor. Remember to stay happy, humble, and forever compassionate. And I love you guys so, so much. Bye.